basically what's happened is the sort of the, the matters of two families uh, the first being the young person at the centre of excuse me at the centre of the story their family and then Hugh Edwards family and basically their trouble trauma feud is playing out in the national media mm. um, it, the the young person's family it, it basically seems like they're feuding and the parents have used the son uh, to pursue that feud and then the young person has used their lawyers and the BBC to put their side of the case forward and then if as and I think we'll talk about this a bit more in a minute if as the Met says there's no evidence of criminality taking place then what's going on there with Hugh is a matter for his family it's not a matter I don't think and you know other people will see that judgment differently Public interest, you know, and versus what interests the public are two different things. But if Hugh Edwards has paid money in return for sexually explicit photos of someone who is of age, that's not criminal. Mm. It might, his wife might have a problem with it, and that's for them. Middle England might have a problem with it. Yeah, but again, it's, you know, they might have a problem with it, but why does it concern them? Yeah. You know? If uh, it's it's like if we were to, I agree, pal. I'm on your side. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But if you know, if we, if we extrapolate out and just pick some random person, I won't name anyone for the sake of, uh, well, yes, Ed Campbell. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let's say Ed Campbell uh, is a prolific OnlyFans user, mm. and in 20 years' time, he's married, and his wife is doesn't know perhaps that he's using OnlyFans and spending a lot of the household income on it. That would be a problem for them in their marriage. Yeah. Would it be a problem that deserved the front page of The Sun? I don't think it would be. Um, but anyway, you've pulled up that statement from The Sun now, so you can, you can drop that. It's a very clever statement. Okay. So The Sun said that they would uh, cooperate with the BBC and that there were um, a dossier containing wide-ranging allegations, which they've received, and they will pass on what they can and there's no plans to publish further allegations now this is where it gets interesting the spokesman added we must also re-emphasize that the sun at no point in our original story alleged criminality and also took the decision neither to name mr edwards nor the young person involved in the allegations suggestions about possible criminality were first made at a later date by other media outlets including the bbc now this is actually where it gets really interesting because i that's correct in their original story they didn't but then what was going on online because online they were <laughs> implying criminality very careful with the language here aren't yeah. we yeah um so i'll just read you this one headline on the sun this was on the sun's um website on sunday 9th of july bbc sex probe top bbc star who paid child for sex pictures could be charged by cops and face years in prison experts say i'll then draw you to another one uh, top BBC star taken off air after paying teenager for sexual pictures. Now, this one in the Daily Mail. Stripped half naked, the BBC man was on his sofa waiting for my child to perform. Mother of youth paid 35k for sex pics by famous host tells of shock at seeing lewd image of star as man could face police probe over crimes carrying 14 year sentence. Now, I'm that that is implying criminality. Mm. No doubt. Yeah. Correct to say it might not have been in the original printed publication. That is. And half the country, whether you implied or did not imply, did think for a time there that this BBC presenter was a nonce. Mm. And that, that, that's abominable. Mm. Yeah, I think um, you, you're now sort of left evidentially. Do you believe the son mm. and the parents of the young person involved? They're sort of like one actor in this. Then, do you believe the young person who, identity we don't know, speaks through their lawyers, gave a statement to the BBC? And then thirdly, the third party is the Met, is the Met Police. Now, we touched on this with um, Charlotte yesterday, which is, you know, when, when the charge rate and conviction rate, particularly uh, in, in the most egregious case, in, in the case of rape, is so low can you trust the police you know as, uh, as a sort of signifier of what is true what is correct and and you know the criminal justice system more broadly 
I agree that there's their performance is woeful, but in lieu of any other sort of arbiter of truth, yeah, i.e., like the court system, we don't re- we don't we, we don't really have another alternative. And if and if the police are saying that they're not pursuing you know criminal charges in this case, that for me is a very clear indicator because I you know I stand by what I said yesterday. If the Met Police thought that someone had was in possession of indecent images of a, of a of a minor, or you know, not necessarily a minor, but someone who was over sixteen but below eighteen, mm. they would not hang around. They would not hang around um, in in pursuing that case, especially not now after lessons have been learned with previous, mm-hmm. is, you know, yeah, yeah, no. instances of this. No, exactly. And then I think if you look at okay, well, let's let's look at one of the other key key parties. Then let's look at let's talk about the Sun. Mm. And I actually think I was perhaps a little bit guilty when it first came out of just taking taking their journalism at face value. Um, go and ask the people of Merseyside. Go to Liverpool and ask people about the Sun newspaper. Uh, they'll tell you uh, to not trust a word it says. They'll tell you it's a rag and they'll tell you not to buy it. Um, as will lots of other people. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Very recent, within living memory in the 80s, the Sun, and this was before the the uh, Sexual Offences Act 2003 passed, which is where, you know, we were talking about the discrepancy between 16 to consent to sex, 18 um, to sort of appear in, appear in sexual images. That's the piece of legislation that changed that, 2003. But before that, in the 80s, the Sun, on page three, printed topless photos of a woman called Sam Fox, Samantha Fox. She was 16 years old. Tits out. Mm. Fully tits out. Fine with it then. But then I know society's changed. The law has changed. Um, what they did then wasn't legal. But to then be kind of, um, you know, the morality police. Yeah. Well, exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, page three was page three was running for a for a long time. And to be clear, you know, obviously not illegal, particularly in the mo- in the most recent cases. But you know, page three ran for a long time. Page three ran for a long time. They were very ha- very happy to um, financially benefit from. Uh, women's bodies mm. you know so and they still do to some extent well yeah most tabloids do yeah i mean there's still like you know plenty plenty of like celebs in bikinis and yeah all that kind of stuff floating around um now see where i think this the, the story then develops is how quickly the commentariat was to jump onto it so patrick christie's i think we might have brought this up the other day on gb news said that parliamentary privilege should be used to name this person Lee Anderson, the deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, said that the uh, BBC was full of perverts. Now, what, what is that? Mm-hmm. Everything was alleged. You didn't know who the person was in writing. And you didn't know what acts they were. Imagine if someone had gone into the Commons and named him as a, as a, a pervert. Yeah, yeah. It'd be horrific. And I, th- I think you can't... I think you have to understand those... Um, conversations around it in the context in the political context and also the societal context um there are myriad people in particularly in the press the right wing right wingers therefore i.e the newspapers who are like ideologically opposed to the existence of the bbc some of that is for political reasons they don't think that there should be you know a state-funded broadcaster and that's a valid political position to have. It's one I disagree with, but it's an argument you can have. And then there's the more uh, pragmatic, nakedly nakedly practical opposition to it, which is that they can't compete with the BBC, with an ad-funded business. Um, Rachel Johnson recently revealed that in a meeting with uh, Rupert Murdoch at Chequers, Boris Johnson was told by Rupert Murdoch, as Rupert Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch bounced Wilfred on his knee, uh, that Boris had to kill the BBC. Uh, you know, you need to you need to get rid of it. We can't compete with it. There are actors in our society who have absolutely no bones about capitalising on a story like this to try to undermine the BBC because it suits their political ends. Then the second part, the societal context around it is, you know, and to be absolutely clear, in no way equating, for example this instance we're talking about with previous instances which I'm about to mention they are not the same thing Philip Schofield's case that's happened very recently 
And then again, these are not the same thing, but before that, Jimmy Savile. And the long shadow of that that hangs over not just the BBC, but the British media and the British entertainment establishment, mm. it casts a very, very long shadow. And as a result of that, you can sort of uh, see where the moral panic comes from around this story. One final thing, and I'm aware I've been talking for a very long time, so I'll, I will let you speak, but I just want to say this as well. So we don't know, we don't know the gender of the person involved, but there is a broader um, sort of societal moral panic about older men, in the case of Hugh Edwards, sexually taking advantage of other people in society. And I think some of it, particularly in, the, in Schofield's case, is filled with latent homophobia. It is, it is identifying gay people as sexual predators, um, as well as, you know, we can talk about the, the broader context of transphobia um, and, and this kind of, yeah, moral panic about young people having sex. Um, so, yes, that's, that's sort of my piece, and I'm aware that I've spoken for a really long time. No, it's really interesting. That's actually what the Tory MP I, I was speaking to last night was saying. He was quite up in arms about it. He was talking about latent homophobia. Mm. And that, that being pretty pervasive in the country. Yeah. 